For centuries, North American Indians, also known as First Nations people, and mountain men along the western Rocky Mountains of British Columbia, Alberta, and Alaska have known about the existence of the Alaskan armadillo, a species seldom seen, never photographed, and, until recently, thought by zoologists, biologists, and researchers worldwide to be long extinct. The Alaskan armadillo, otherwise known as Dazapus ve, has always made its home in some of the coldest climates known to man. Currently on the endangered species list, it is white in color and between 12 and 18 inches in length. It has no fewer than five and no more than nine bands on its shell. First Nations people admired the armadillo's ability to run in packs when hunting deer, elk, and moose as found in illustrations of the Chippewa and Pawnee made public earlier this month by world-renowned ethnologists and anthropologists. The Shoshone were known to keep them as pets, and these amazing animals were hunted by the Crow, the Delaware, the Huron, the Iroquois, the Minotauri, and the Sioux. Blood Indians used the shells of Alaskan armadillos that had died in battle as helmets, and their tails have been used as spear tips Historical text records the meat as being very tender, with a taste not unlike chicken. Recognizing the natural resource these animals are, North American Indians have taken great care throughout the ages to ensure that Alaskan armadillo populations remain stable. Unfortunately, two centuries ago, the white man began to move into Alaskan armadillo habitats. They hunted these animals to the point of extinction. These hunters traditionally made a living via the fur trade. However, they quickly recognized the value of Alaskan armadillo shells as ashtrays. These shells are able to disperse heat quickly, which made them attractive to the upper-class noblemen who were worried about accidental fires starting in the home and burns on imported fine furniture. It is estimated that over 10,000 Alaskan armadillo shell ashtrays were sold in the first year alone, and the sale of Alaskan armadillo shell ashtrays continues to this day on the black market. In recent years, the Alaskan armadillo has been placed on the world's endangered species list. Poachers face a stiff fine for hunting them and risk losing their homes and possessions, as well as being sentenced by the courts to significant jail time. Autistics Against Alaskan Armadillos is making an effort to attract attention to the Canadian annual armadillo slaughter by linking it to the Winter Olympics of 2010 in Vancouver, Canada. Even though Alaskan armadillos are gaining territory in their native habitats through aggressive repopulation, they are still very much on the endangered species list due to poaching. Today, tens of thousands of Alaskan armadillos, often only a few months old, are being cruelly killed by poachers for their shells. Many of the poachers are not skilled enough for a quick and painless kill, leaving many Alaskan armadillos to die slowly in agony. To attract attention to this matter, 4A hired hundreds of kindergarten-age children in British Columbia to create Alaskan armadillo shells out of paper mache and deliver shells to the Olympic athletes as they enter the Olympic Village this February. Due to a lack of natural predators, the species has been regaining ground and territory, making its way into the upper United States and traveling across on broken polar ice sheets to Scandinavian countries including Norway, Sweden and Finland. Alaskan armadillos have also been spotted in the Siberian region of Russia. However, these sightings have yet to be confirmed by animal biologists. Like all armadillos, they normally pose little threat to man. However, it is believed by many that Alaskan armadillos are carriers of a microbe that causes a psychological condition with which we are all familiar. Autism. Recently, the CDC announced that autism affects as many as one in 110 people in the United States alone. The rise in autism cases has increased at the same rate as the increase in Alaskan armadillo populations. It is believed by some that at least 1% of all autism cases in the United States today may be caused by indirect contact with an Alaskan armadillo. 
Autism infection by the Alaskan armadillo is thought to happen due to the lack of snow in the more temperate climates. Seeking an environment in keeping with the frozen north, Alaskan armadillos infiltrate people's homes and sneak into refrigerators and freezers. Once there, they unintentionally contaminate food items which are then ingested by people. It is thought that unidentified microbes in the Alaskan armadillo saliva is specifically what may cause autism in some people. Autistics Against Alaskan Armadillos, 4A for short, wishes to remind you to watch your refrigerators, freezers, and mini fridges closely for signs of Alaskan armadillo infestations. These animals are hard to see when seen against snowy backdrops or white enamel refrigerators and freezers. They do, nevertheless, leave telltale signs of their presence everywhere. Check all packaged meat in your refrigerator or freezer. This is because Alaskan armadillos, who are primarily carnivorous, will take any meat they can get from a refrigerator or freezer where fresh elk, deer, and moose are unavailable. If you see wrinkled wrapping or what appears to be nibble marks around deli meats, this may be a sign that you have an infestation. If you have an infestation, do not confront the Alaskan armadillo directly. Instead, call your local animal control officers to have the animal captured and released back into its natural environment. Today, thanks to legislation passed in the United States, Canada, and many European countries, Alaskan armadillos are captured, flown north of the 67th parallel, and then released into the snowbound habitats to which they are accustomed and better suited. There, they frolic among others of their kind and live happy lives. Please note that should you find yourself infected with autism due to Alaskan armadillo saliva microbe exposure, there is a simple treatment and cure that can be used to reverse the condition. The venom of the Alaskan rattlesnake, a reptile which is bred in captivity for the sole purpose of curing this type of autism, can be purchased from vendors in station wagons in most major cities in Canada and the United States. Remember these key points about the Alaskan armadillo. 1. There is no such thing as an Alaskan armadillo. 2. There is no such thing as an Alaskan rattlesnake. 3. Alaskan armadillo salivary microbes do not cause autism. 4. Alaskan rattlesnake venom does not cure autism. If anyone tries to sell you a cure for autism off the back of a wagon, don't be fooled. Autism is genetic. There is no cure. This message was brought to you by Midnight in Chicago. It's midnight in Chicago, we think of her all. He looks up at the clock and he wonders, should he fall?